Yeah. So, what was your first impression of Virat Kohli, the player and the person when you got into the team? You can never change the fact that I from I'm first a Karnataka player, I'm from Bangalore, that will never change. And I used to always think that I'll play for CSK and be done. I'll be retiring at CSK. That's the feeling because Hi, hello and welcome back to Kuti Stories with Ash, brought to you by Peter England. We've got yet another guest and uh, I was thinking how to introduce him, but then I thought it's apt uh, to say that this is a batsman that I, I saw as a captain and completely went, wow, this is a generational talent. And then went on to play under his captaincy for the Indian cricket team. Now he's quite a successful IPL captain, qualified twice in two years for a new franchise. Welcome on the show, KL. Thank, Thank you so much for doing this. Very, very, very kind words. Yeah. Now, how do you feel about it? I prepared for that. Yeah, it was, it was good. I mean, but it was, you know, you saw me, made me think that how long back did we play? You know, it feels like ages back that we played for Punjab and um, yeah, a lot has happened after that. So, yeah. Going into this, I'm sure you would have watched some of the stuff that I do. It's very, it's nothing to pull out any controversies or anything. <laughs> But nevertheless, I'll ask some tricky questions. Yeah, uh, but I'll just brief you. Uh, the yeah. first segment is going to be Reminisce with Ash, which is going to be digging deep and talking a lot of stories about. And the second one is going to be about Gentleman's League, which is a question that will, in, in the raising world of spirit of cricket, we'd be yeah. talking a little bit about what that means and what it is to okay. be a gentlemanly character on the field. And finally, it's DRS with Ash. I'll ask you to make some reviews on the decisions you've made in the past. Okay. And also put you on the spot for a small rapid fire. Sweet. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. So let's begin with Reminisce with Ash. Uh, Kale, uh, there have been some guests on the show that I've asked about the IPL itself. Uh, when the IPL began, genuinely a lot of them thought that this will be a two or three year tournament because there's a lot of money that was being talked about then. Uh, but you must have been a... Have you ever been a ball boy when the IPL began in an IPL game? What were you doing? You were a generational talent from Karnataka. <laughs> um, I've never been a ball boy. Um, and strangely enough, I don't think I've watched too many live games up until... I hadn't watched any, I think, uh, up until the IPL. I'd watched one game when I was probably like seven, eight. I was very little. We used to live in Mangalore. Um, and come to Bangalore for, for the summer holidays and see the rest of the family. And uh, one, one summer we came here and ended up meeting some of the cousins and one of my uncles had two tickets for a game in Chinnaswamy. I think it was, if I remember correctly, it was a game between New Zealand, touring team New Zealand playing Karnataka in, in Bangalore. And, um, and my dad knew how much I liked cricket and how much I uh, you know, loved playing it. So. Um, you know, he took those tickets from my uncle and one of the days he took me there and um, that was a, that was my first time going into Chinnaswamy and watching a cricket game. I was very, very little. Um, and then the next thing I remember, I mean, obviously I played a lot of cricket when, when the IPL started, I think it was in 2008 and I would have played at least four or five games by then, some of the under 13, under 15 games in, in the stadium and uh, we used to get this... Um, tickets as state players to go and yeah. watch the game So in, in one of the members stands. So all of us, I think we were probably, I was under 17 back then and a uh, few of our, few of the Karnataka teammates got those tickets. We went into the members stand and watched this game. Um, the first game in Chinnaswamy, I think it was the first game of the IPL, that one versus uh, KKR versus uh, RCB and Brendan McCullum just absolutely um, you know, destroyed RCB Smashed that the game. test team at RCB. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Destroyed them completely and it was so much fun watching it. Like I said, I'd not watched too many live games. So, uh, just going with your teammates and being in, in, the, in the energy of a stadium was um, firstly really, really good. And then to watch an innings like Brendan McCollum's um, and seeing the, the, the birth of the IPL in front of my eyes was, was something very special. And um, somewhere I'm sure like from the test cricketer mold that I was in and um, you know the initial years of um, what our coaches tell us is to play along the ground and you know 
aim to play 100 test matches and all of that. Somewhere watching the IPL and watching the Brendan McCullum's innings, I think something changed in my head from right from the next day at practice. I was, you know, secretly trying to hit sixes and, and you know, um, get like get my range of shots to be a bit more than just like the test format so i think yeah it, it made a huge difference um in my career and uh, here we are today and I'm, i'll never forget that moment and i i know exactly which stand i was sitting in not like chinaswami is a huge stadium but yeah just where we sat and 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 watched i think a couple of times the ball was hit towards us and we got excited though we were cricketers and you know we forgot all of all about that and we felt like one of one of the crowds sitting there and watching watching a brilliant cricket match. Right, KL, I, I used to come to the NCA, started playing for the India, I used to come to NCA. The current throwdown specialist for the Indian team, Raghu, I'm sure you know him very well. Yeah. Um, Raghu used to tell me, KL Rahul, the next Rahul Ravid, KL Rahul, the next Rahul Ravid. So, from what I knew then, it was all about KL Rahul had already been uh, pitted for better things from this particular state. It's often been a case in Karnataka that they identify a a player like that and they go on to do great things for India. Only for Raghu sir, only he branded <laughs> me as the next Rahul Dravid. I never felt like, you know, I, I was the next big, best, best, best or big thing from Karnataka. Uh, obviously, there were a lot of like players in my batch, um, you know, Mayank, Karun, uh, all of these guys. We all played in the same batch. Manish was a year or two older than us. Mayank and Karun and all these other guys, they were from Bangalore. They played here. They played a lot of club cricket here. So, um, you know, their names would do the rounds a lot more than mine because they played some um, college and, and school tournaments here in Mangalore. I had nothing. So for me, my only way to get the attention of, of uh, the state, the coaches and all of them was to play in whatever, um, we used to call it zonal games, Mangalore, Bangalore, Mysore, all these teams would play play together. So that's that was my only uh, platform and stage and I did well and, and um, yeah, for them to recognize that I was talented and, and invest a little bit of time in me and uh, they sent me to the NCAs and right from under 15s I've you know I've probably done seven eight NCAs and uh, you spoke about how you devised your game towards playing test cricket the longer format of it how KSCA saw it and clearly it's visible when you play when you bat uh, everything everything about what you do how you move how you play the ball is all you know perfect and uh, how did T20 cricket happen? You caught the ball that Brendan McCullum hit and T20 cricket got into you or you had to work for it. How did you end up at RCB? Yeah, I'm sure, like I said, Ash, that was my, my first memory of, of watching a T20 game. And I'm sure, like, psychologically something went off in my head. And um, it was around the time where, you know, T20 cricket had just started. I mean, it were, we were, like I said, I was under 17. so. We didn't, under 17, under 19s didn't have a lot of T20 cricket. It was only the senior teams would play a little bit of T20 cricket. And then the IPL happened and uh, you suddenly saw um, players that you played with uh, going on to play Ranji Trophy cricket. I mean, Ranji Trophy players would go on and play uh, IPL. And, and my first experience was the guys that I played with, like uh, the just the few that I name now. Um, we all used to perform I mean, more or less the, the same. Our performances would be great. Uh, Maya, Karun, me, Manish, slightly slightly older than us, a couple of batches above us. So he would perform. So all of them went on to play for the IPL. And all our performances in state cricket would be more or less the same. So I, I sat back and wondered, OK, I mean, I they're getting the opportunity and they're getting this huge platform to, to you know showcase their talent. And back then, it was like, you, you're like, I want to have that opportunity. More than playing cricket is to just share dressing rooms with the greats of, of, of the game from your country, from from overseas. You just wanted to be in that dressing room and learn and get better. So I said, okay, I, I mean, I can't, I need to be there. So what do I need to do? So me and my coach, we you know, not, not necessarily like sit and discuss this is what we need to do. Like it just changed. I said, okay, I want to develop this game as well. And um, yeah, I, I started practicing it and for, for a long time I would do it and in the nets and everything, I was very confident. In the nets, I could hit big sixes. Nobody would agree. Even if you ask Mayank and Karun, they'll still say that he could not hit a six until under 19 and under 22s. Which, I mean, I don't disagree because I never hit a six in a game. In, in nets and everything, I was very confident I would hit it. But in the game, I didn't have that confidence. So slowly, I mean, my focus was still test cricket. I didn't want to get away from what my 
strengths are but like like quietly i would practice and and you know go to the bowling machine and like just keep hitting balls and just keep practicing and and then you know we played one, you know a couple of college tournaments that i played slightly lower level and i i did well in those like t20 games and stuff so i slowly started getting confidence and then i got picked for uh mustaq ali and i did really well and from there on it just like it's just the confidence that i got that i can do it in the game that's the only thing that changed it was not like i i had i had to go reinvent my game or something i was quietly doing it and once i did it in the game i got that confidence and then rcb picked me and then you know i was in the ipl where i wanted to be just share the dressing room with the guys and those two years even though i didn't get many opportunities just i learned so much just being there my first memory of kl rahul in the ipl was when csk was playing rcb in a game at chennai mm-hmm. but you were not playing that game you came in as a sub mm. and i think you were just diving around you know yeah, yeah. you were you were just suspended in the air for a bit yeah yeah uh, it was probably 2012 13 12 12 12 remember yeah yeah in that year i saw i saw you like take off yeah and that was just the starting of such people taking off in an ipl field yeah, yeah. okay and i i was i can't remember who it was i just turned around who the hell is this guy man yeah. it was like rahul written yeah, on the yeah. back and all that that was my first memory of you uh but how exactly did rcb happen for you how was the day can you remember it yeah um, very clearly um we just finished mustaq ali we were playing in uh, shumoga i think um i done really well i got about three or four fifties in six odd games were you opening the batting then i'm um, not very sure i think number 3 or must be in the 1 2 3 um i actually batted most of my junior cricket at number 3 till under 19s i was batting at number 3 number 4 sometimes and uh, when my when i felt like i could play ranji trophy i was th- right there knocking at the door i felt like the only way i could make it into the ranji trophy 11 was if i opened the batting cuz 3 to 7 were like you know it was fixed they were like consistent performers for years and years and they were very young they were you know ganesh satish and kb pawan and yep. all all of these guys who scored tons of runs and i knew they were not moving so um, the only way i could get in is is opening the batting so um so i opened in one of the i think under 22 state games and then i did well and then i went on to play ranji trophy and same way here i'm not so 1 2 3 4 is where i generally played uh, for karnataka in the first few years and um, we were there i remember getting a call from uh, avinash vaidya and um, he said uh, when you guys coming back to bangalore i said in a couple of days he said when you come back just give me a call and stuff so back then it, it was you know you know how the teammates and everyone talks you know when you get a call from one of these people Manchester. like you know you're in the reckoning or you might get a contract so you start getting excited and all of that so um, yeah so i I, I didn't know he didn't tell me anything he just said come and call so i went came back here and and called him he said come to itc gardenia at so and so time um, we want to meet you and stuff i said okay I, i went there without knowing or expecting what i was going to get i didn't want Easier to said then done yeah i didn't want to get my expectations too high and then like go crashing down so i went there i mean like with fingers crossed hopefully i get this contract so i went there and then um we I met him for uh, briefly at the at the entrance, and he said, "Just come. We're going to the boardroom, meeting room, whatever is that RCB room." And I went there, and Virat was there, and um, um, Ray Jennings, the coach, was there, and some some other like uh, support staff people. And and then they said, "Would you be? Uh, would you?" I think Virat only said, "Would you want to sign this contract and play for RCB?" I said, "Are you kidding? Obviously, I mean, this is what we this is what I dreamt of." And um, and he said i'm joking it's not an option just sign the contract and come into the team is like best so i just signed it and then um yeah we're at said you know it's going to be a crazy ride you're going to have a lot of fun in the next two months i look forward to you know uh playing with you and having you on the team it was it was wonderful then i went back very happy and told my parents told did my you family. know we're at before that interaction did you have um, you met him had you met him before i hadn't met him but um i remember always seeing him in the nca and and i think he was only like one under 19 batch senior to me okay so every time we would have like an under 15 or under 17 nca simultaneously there'd be under 19 nca also happening just around that time we would overlap by 10 15 days sometimes so i always remember seeing him i remember seeing ishant as an under 19 kid and you know uh, 
you these names would do the rounds back then and you you knew these players and yeah i'd seen him like that i'd never met him so uh, it felt by then i think he'd already become virat kohli yeah, yeah so what was your first impression of virat kohli the player and the person when you got into the team like you were in the rcb dugout mm. you were traveling with the team you're in the hotel all of a sudden you're in the big men's league right so what was your I mean, first, I'm, I'm sure for you also it was the same or for any other player at that age just walking into an IPL dressing room is the same. It takes you at least like a couple of weeks to just settle into that team and feel like you belong and like you can compete with these players and your skills are at that level. Um, so same for me. First, I think first two weeks was just like, you know, you were just going through the motion. You didn't know. You were just like... Um, Every day you came back to the room. There were packages, and you back then you'd get like you know your. What uh, did RCB given the packages by the way? No, the clothing. Every day you'd get different clothing. Your you know kit bags with your names and um, all of that like stuff just kept coming. So first two weeks were like you know you were in a dreamland and you were just getting like gifts and stuff around, and uh, you'd just go practice and come back. And then I think it took me two or three games to just like. calm my nerves and and like feel like okay now I'm part of this team and um and I think players also like you know they have their own process it's not like you get welcomed into the team with the red carpet and you know there are people everyone's patting you on the back and saying calm down and relax nothing none of that happens everyone's like you know doing their jobs doing their doing their thing and it also like the everyone as a team you you come together only like a week before the tournament and everyone's like busy some are jet lag some are just getting used to uh, like the place bangalore wherever we are and all of that was there's, there's too much like this too busy in the first few weeks and then slowly once the game started i know i felt comfortable to go up to uh, players in the dressing room and speak to them we had uh, uh, Zach and, and um, ABD, you had Chris, ABD, Gale. Chris, Virat, all of them. Like you know, that's quite the dressing room to walk yeah, in. Yeah, right? it's huge. And but but it also they were there. Like I said, I mean, it was as a youngster, you obviously firstly very like scared, and you don't want to go and speak. At least I was like that. Um, but once you like make make a little bit of an effort and go and talk to them, you realize they're very they're very very humble, very. Um, easy to talk to and all of that so yeah it was fun from there the things that i learned in in those two months i think like just the things the, the amount of time that it would have taken me to become the player would have pro- playing just ranji trophy and first class cricket probably would have taken me 7 8 seasons but just those two months of being in the ipl i felt like i gained um, so much knowledge and experience and like um my game and and everything became like everything was fast forwarded in in those two months and that i think is is the beauty of ipl and what it did to players like me and and a lot of players in in who came up through the ipls during during those times yeah talk about how the how your game really fast track through the ipl that you got into rcb uh but you were not there for very long right you immediately went to another team yeah. i still remember i was i used to play at csk for almost all of my early yeah. early years and i used to always think that i'll play for csk and be done i'll be retiring at csk that's the feeling because as a cricketer you always feel right from your club cricket and state cricket you play somewhere you're comfortable you enjoy it you finish there uh, but this suddenly changed the landscape of it changed players could go into the auction and you got sold elsewhere um, and i know the fandom that rcb gets yeah. and the kind of attachment the namma bengaluru players have for rcb is kind of different yeah, yeah. how is it in your case have you learned that it's a part and parcel or you always have leave a bit of that in the chinna swami dressing room i mean you can never change the fact that i from i'm first a karnataka player i'm from bangalore that will never change right i played kca is my home chinna swami stadium is my home first and then the ipl has happened and all of that and yes obviously um everyone wants to play for the for their home state or the home city and i'm from bangalore so to play for bangalore would have been ideal but like i said when when i started thinking or dreaming of ipl and t20 cricket by then this this was already a set thing you know players moved around even in the first season it was not like you know um 
like Virat's from Delhi, Mayabha is from uh, Jharkhand, Ranchi, he plays for CSK. So that had already happened. So, um, so for us growing up, like we didn't feel like it was a huge change. We obviously wanted to play from from the same um, same franchise if possible. But if not, we all we wanted was an opportunity to play and and um, showcase our talent and climb the climb up and go and play your country and and do do those things so yes moving around um, is not easy but you you sort of like get used to it or like you know that that's what was like set for us like we didn't have to maybe the guys who played in the first two seasons would have been very different for them to adjust to something like that it's a new concept and a new thing but for us by the time we came into the IPLs and stuff it was already something that's been happening for 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 a long time so we it was quite okay for me and yes i would have like you just said i would have also loved to play for bangalore and and i started there i would have wanted to play there till i finished that's what even i thought in my head but you know the when one when the auction happened i went to srh for for a couple of years um, again that's again the the beauty of ipl you go, get the opportunity to go and play with different players to play on different teams, experience uh, different places, and how much like they love their cricket. Like Hyderabad, they love their cricket very differently to RCB. And then from there on, we went to Punjab together, played there for a few years, and then now Lucknow. So um, it's been amazing for me, at least, to like play with so many different players, play under different coaches, and play under like different home crowds. And yeah, it's it's helped me. Um, become a better cricketer, handle pressure much better, and yeah, for me right now, Lucknow and Lucknow Super Giants are, is is my home team, and again, I I I've, I've had this wonderful opportunity to create or like make a franchise, like start a franchise from scratch, and I don't think people uh, who played after two thousand eight when the first IPL began had that opportunity ever to start. Um, a franchise or start a team from scratch. So when the two new teams happened and I had the opportunity to go there, that's what excited me most to go there and create my own team and create the own create create, create my own culture. And um, yeah, so it's been fun. And uh, yeah, hopefully, I mean, I can I can finish there. Right. I really do wish you well on that. Yeah. But uh, from being a player, I mean, I personally uh, cannot ignore uh, this particular aspect of it. If I may ask. You started at RCB and you you were tapping into all these players to become a better batter. Which has been your breakaway or best season as a batter in the IPL? I think my according to me, my best season was 2018, the first season at. Uh, Did it have something to do with the captain there? Yeah, I'm sure. Um, uh, you know, he was he was wonderful. He was captaining for the first time, um, and you know, it helped that we both came from from. Know, very close and very uh, friendly states. Uh, so yeah, I was yeah he was very supportive and we had. Like, no, you can carry on about yeah, your batting. Yeah. <laughs> that was um, just in jest. Yeah, I think that that was my breakthrough in terms of if I look at my career today, I think that was my breakthrough, uh, see breakthrough season as a batsman. But I can't ignore um, 2016 season with RCB. That's where, I mean. I caught the eyes of selectors or people in our country and, and, and showed that I can also play uh, white ball cricket and I have the game for it. Like I said, I'd never done it on, on a platform like IPL, so no one, um, no one believed or no one thought that I could uh, do well. So I would get criticism. I wouldn't say criticism back then. It was that they sort of branded me as a test player, but I, you know, um, broke out of that like mold and and showed that I can play this game as well and yeah and from there on I got my opportunities to play for one day and and T20 for India's as, India for India as well so yeah that that changed my career but 2018 I think I felt um like I gave myself a lot more confidence that I have you know I can be one of the best T20 players, batters in the world. Uh, T20 batters in the world. It, it was amazing. It was amazing to watch the way you went about your business and the way you batted. It used to be like, wow, you yeah. know, this this batter is really special. Uh, but anyway, I think I need to just move on uh, because you were a player at Kings, then you became a captain for a couple of years, and now, like you said, you went to LSG and you had the opportunity to create the culture there. 
uh, you were a captain for two years at Kings, got so close to qualifying and missed, just like how I was there. And then you moved on to LSG and you qualified two in two in two seasons. What is that magic portion that you learnt in the previous franchisee that you corrected in the next one to qualify twice in two times? Um, just in general about like building, building your team, the sort of players that you pick, um, what are the key positions in T20 cricket um, that you, you know, can't afford to miss in the auctions? There, that's some of the learnings that I took from from there. And um, yes, as a, it was first few years of me captaining as well. So I mean, I'm I'm not um, shy to admit that I made a few mistakes as well. Um, in the journey of understanding how to be a leader and how to be a captain. Um, now I can I can say that I was, you know, I was still very comfortable in my personality as a very quiet, reserved. Like did my business and you know I played my cricket and went on and and didn't worry much about everything else that was happening. But I realized like a year into leadership and and being the captain that I can't do that. I also I can't only manage my energy and try and um, you know make sure that I am in the best mental space possible to perform. I have to also carry 23, 24 other people, sometimes the support staff as well. Uh, and yeah, so I, from second season onwards, I, I try to, you know, uh, be a lot more, um, you know, spend a lot more time with the players, spend, you know, um, spend time in the, on, the, on the ground, spend time off the field. This is something that, you know, through like captaining and through speaking to different captains that I admired as as a as a player, um, what I learned and what's been common about everything, one thing that's been common about what everyone has said, all the great leaders of of cricket have said is that you need to be able to um, create a bond and you need to create a relationship outside of the field with with your players and only then will they fight for you. You know, if you expect them to just turn up and fight for you, that's not going to happen. You need to know them. You need to know who they are as people first. Keep the sportsman and the athlete away first, and get to understand who they are as people first, and and then you know build that friendship and take it from there. Then you'll know how to handle different people. Not all eleven players um, are the same, so you need to find that, find a way to get the best out of them. So I try to do that. I'm not saying I do it. Uh, do it well. I'm still learning how to do it, but that that's been one thing that's very common. So, for me, that is not the most comfortable because, like I said, my personality is play. I want to manage my energy. I want to, um, you know, be in my own space and go about my game. But yeah, this is my learning as a captain that I can't I can't do that. It's not only about me. It's also, you know, you are actually like you know very low on the priority list when it comes to uh, the, the entire team. Dynamics. Yeah. Uh, you worked with several coaches. I can name a few. Some of them are yeah. very, very popular. Uh, Anil Bhai uh, at Kings, your format of years as a skipper, uh, he must have been quite helpful. Then you worked with Andy Flar. Now we moved on to Justin Langer. What what has been the different approaches that you've encountered so far? And you also mentioned about which player sp slots are very important in the auction. As a captain, how important is the auction dynamics as well? Or is it the most important thing? Now I feel like that is the most important okay. thing, I, like because we've got got the results, like decent results in the first two seasons, and I think mostly has to do with the kind of team that we picked. Um, yeah, I think I mean if you've covered more skills and like if you've got all of that right, you will more often than not be in a very comfortable position. Not nothing guarantees you the championship, but at least you're in in gives you the best possible chance to win the championship so um, I think that's where we that's what we got right in the first season and once we did that then we just built on a few things in the next two seasons um, on working with different coaches yes I mean it's just been great to learn from these uh, people and and the guys you've named Anil by Andy Flower and now Justin Langer they're all they all come in, come with so much experience of being players themselves firstly and then they've, they've coached many different teams and, and since franchise leagues have um, become like you know you see 
a league very popular being, yeah very popular and you see a franchise be, being played through the year somewhere or the other and Andy Flaher just Justin may not have done so much but he's been a very very successful coach with Australia and with Perth Scorchers um Anil Kumble you know comes from the same state so we had that uh, I had that comfort to go and openly speak with him and be free and like make a few changes and and you know one of the things like i mentioned you know just to get out of my comfort zone and put the team first is also something that he told me uh, when i started captaining and something that he noticed and then um, he you know he he told me that this is something that you can work on to be a better leader which you know which really helped me um we again we both worked really hard there at punjab and tried to um, you know uh, qualify and and create a good culture and i i think we did that but obviously cricket is judged only on 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 the performance and the results so you know we don't have much to show so yeah from there i worked with andy flower there as well for for but a couple of years contrasting uh, personalities andy flower and anil bai doesn't quite believe in matchups today t20 cricket is a lot about matchups andy flower is only about matchups from whatever i've heard and seen yeah. Where do you stand on that? You're the captain. You're actually the linchpin between them because Andy and Anil, they both work together at Kings. Yeah, so. I mean, again, I think that's the that's the challenge as a as a captain. Uh, There's Anil so much. Once, Anil Bay once told me, a good bowler is a good bowler. Period. Yeah, which I do tend to agree. But where do you sit on that? Yeah, I mean, he knows best. He's got six hundred thousand wickets, so I mean, I can't go against uh, against that bowling bit. Obviously, he knows a lot more, and and he would tell me who is bowling well, how can I use a certain bowler in what period of the of the game, and um, all of that. So, there's so much information coming when you're a captain. You just need to know which one to take and which one, you know, um, to ignore. Not to ignore, but. see if that that is the best thing or whether you have a gut feel which is against what they are saying um initial initially for me it was very hard to go against that because culturally we are thought that you know um respect the elders and what they say must go um so for me for first few times you know it was very hard to say no i'm not going to do this this is what i feel and i need to do um and i did that and somehow it didn't go according to plan and i'd go back to the room and and find myself um, you know not being able to sleep and feeling like why didn't you trust your gut your trust you, you know your gut was right you, what you were thinking was probably right and even if that went wrong i could have still slept peacefully now you i'm neither there neither neither here neither there so it was just very confusing so like i've realized just like i said you need to build that relationship and bond with the with the players you also need to do that with the coach your coach is also like you sometimes forget that you're both working towards the same thing you both need want That to achieve be. the same thing so um their way my his way might be different my way might be different but you know we can't go in two different directions that's when the team goes into complete um, chaos and we'll not get the results and neither am i happy neither is the coach happy so it's important that you somewhere find a good balance and and create a good understanding between each other where you know you feel like you're not being stepped over or the coach feels like you are stepping over the coach so it took me some time to build that thing and 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 the guys that i've worked with with have been great that way as as people you know as cricketers they're they're brilliant and and they're one of the greats of of the game but as people they've been easy to work with and you know they've given me that space even if i'd made made mistakes or taken a decision which was probably not the what game. they felt was right you know they've not you know come and questioned me they said it's it's still okay you're a young captain you learn so i've had at least i feel lucky that i've had good people that have been coaches and have captained under good coaches so that's helped me make a few mistakes learn from them and 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 get better You spoke about the rapport that you have with players. How you must spend that amount of time with them to be able to get them to fight on the field. You had some great rapports and some great partnerships on the field, mm. and some off it, uh, namely Virat and yourself, yeah. Mayank and yourself, Atiya and now yourself. So, uh, if I can just put you on the yeah. spot and ask you to rate them out of ten, okay. and also talk a bit about them. Okay. Um, first, I think Mayank and me go. way back right we started playing like cricket the first time we played for karnataka under 13 we we played together from then on till ranji trophy and to play for india we've seen that journey 
together and we've been part of every team that you know he's played or i've played we both played together so um how did you not bid for him at lsg um yeah we got lucky with quinton and then slowly we built the team we had already i mean the three retentions that lsg had was me stoinis and bishnoy um so i was very clear from the experience previously that an all rounder is a is a must so we managed to get um, stoinis and then a leg spinner would have been hard to find in the in the auction and i'd played with bishnoy for two three se- two seasons in punjab so i liked his attitude and and we had a good understanding so we got him on board so from there we built the team around that so yeah that's that's why we we couldn't um get my uncle no I, i would have been very happy to get him because we played four seasons in punjab together god knows how many seasons together at karnataka and everywhere else so yeah um so yeah we go long back and we ended up playing everywhere together but i think we really bonded in punjab cuz there was nothing else to do but like be together for those two months during the ipl and um, yeah that that partnership was really good he understands me really well i understand him really well i think you know we get on each other's nerve equally uh, which you would have seen in the i've seen the, more in, of mayank doing yeah, that yeah. in the dressing room uh, yeah which is great so if you want me to rank that um you want to take atiya and yourself next or virat and yourself i'll go cricket wise or like chronology okay. like okay. mayank came first virat came virat okay we'll then, go virat then atiya came uh, in my life so uh, yeah so mayank could be again a very high 9 and 1/2 okay uh, uh, half i won't give him because he gets on my nerves nice. sometimes okay. yeah um, so he, i think he'd do the same for me so yeah that's a good understanding and then virat obviously since my first season of ipl happened under him as captain and and there i got to really um, you know see him do his thing well, for us always watching cricket on the on on television we felt um, we felt very differently but when you see a player up close someone who you admire and someone who's around the same age and he's gone on to play for the country and doing wonders there you want to sort of like you know he gives you that belief that you also can go in that direction and that's something that he did i i think as a leader as well you know he always um showed us the way he always the inspiration yeah very very inspiring and also somewhere like made each person believe that there's a lot more to you than 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 you you already shown to the world and he wanted you to find that and push yourself so that's something that's you know been inspiring and and luckily for me we uh created a good friendship along the way we played for rcb as well and then i played for india so um i think you know our, our um things that we like to eat the places that we like to go all of that was very similar and so we 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 gelled pretty well from the first first year i don't think we did so much here in rcb in the first season but once i played for india i think you know really got bond to, got better the bond got better you made your test debut under him as well no yes. you made your test debut against uh, under, under ms under ms and, and then, then the next, next game, game was, was under uh, under virat so before you go to atiya i'll just cut you there uh, because there's a very important question i wanted to ask so i asked about virat he's very inspirational so i i'll be failing in my duties if i didn't ask you you didn't play much under ms but you played under rohit uh how 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 different is rohit compared to virat and what did you learn from rohit rohit just like brought a sense of um calmness in the dressing room firstly not to s- he's got that the passions remain the same but it's also there's a bit of bit of calmness in the dressing room and and everyone's i think it also helps that people have have understood their their roles everything's been given by by clearly and people have had enough time to adjust to that position and and that's helped the players feel a lot more comfortable and a lot more you know um at ease i think rohit and rahul bhai coming together has really made a good synergy yeah um, come well together and that's helped the dressing room and players i can say from a player's point of view we all feel comfortable i i knew right from the word go that i will bat at number 5 i will wicket keep and uh, my role was this you know if wickets fall early this is what i need to do if uh, if i walk in at the 
end of 30, 35, what do I need to do? There was, um, you know, it was, I won't say we've had long meetings and Rohit has come and told everybody, you have to do this, you have to do that. He would have had a quiet word with everybody and um, yeah, and he just let everyone feel comfortable in their own, own, own shoes, in their own self and yeah, and the calmness has really helped the dressing room. There's obviously, uh, like I said, Virat had already set the benchmark in terms of how we need to be on the field as an Indian team. So he carried on from that and um, that mixed with a little bit of calmness and, and players, you know, owning their, their slots and owning their positions really helped us perform um, really well in the last one, two years. Yeah. You're right, and I'm just going to clarify it a little bit. There's a lot of fan wars and battles that happened during the IPL, which I find absolutely ridiculous because yeah. what you said about Rohit is what Rohit brings yeah. and how inspiration Virat is, that's what he brings to the table. Correct. So I say there's no one thing about yeah. without the other. Correct. And yeah. uh, we just need to understand that Dada led the way to a Kumble, exactly, yeah. Kumble led the way to a Dhoni and Dhoni to Virat yeah. and Virat to Rohit. It's been wonderful in, in between. Of course, I played under you. I, I can see, I, I could actually see how much you come through as a And each captain. person, when they become the captain of the Indian team, I think they just carry on from there. They build on what Absolutely. has been done. And that is the, the responsibility that you're given when, you're, when you become an Indian captain, is that you don't have to like change the way cricket is played in India. You know, it's something that's worked for us. Yes, there are things that we can get better at. And, you know, when you become the leader, maybe you're, that you 1%. can add on to that 1%. And, you know, 90, 95% of the work has been done by, by the leaders that you mentioned and much plays much before, before them as well. So, yeah, that, that's, yeah, fan wars, I, I don't, I mean, I think you should just take it in... in you know, in, in good spirit and as, as good humor. I it's don't think they mean it as well. I'm it's a lot of fun, actually, yeah. if you look at it as fun. Yeah, it's not like someone who's a, a, a fan, like fan group of A will feel bad if a person B does well. Or, you know, the end of the day, they, they support the Indian cricket team, they support their franchise. And if they win, you know, that's, that's what makes them the happiest. We finished Mayank and you, Virat yeah. and you. Yeah. Now, last but not the least, yeah. it has to come at the end because yeah. it's the it's the finishing desert type. Uh, of course, Atiyah and you. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's compared to the other two people that I know. This is still very fresh in terms of yeah. I mean, I've known Mayank since I was 11 years old. I've known Virat since I was 20 years old. I'm 31 now. I've got I met Atiya when I was 20. Eight, 27 and a half, 28. So, um, yeah. So it's 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 great that I have um, that stability in my life, uh, which 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 is I think in in a lot of ways shows in in my cricket in in the person that I am today. Uh, she has got that stability and gotten got me that balance. Not to say that I wasn't a balanced guy, but I was balanced. Like I felt like I was balanced, but I was always lean towards, you know, I, in, I, I'm, I am a very calm person. So sometimes it would go towards like almost lazy, almost not pushing myself. So, you know, um, she's a fiery one. So she'll make sure that I'm, you know, not getting lazy or Up I'm not, about. yeah, I'm not very comfortable with what's happening. So she'll push me, which is very good for me. And yeah, that's obviously a 10 on 10. And if it was, you don't have an option. Yeah, I mean, if it wasn't a 10 on 10, I mean, I, you're I, not going I wouldn't, back home. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have, uh, I wouldn't have married her, and I wouldn't have asked her to be, uh, you know, such a big part of my my life. And um, yeah, she's she's a huge part of my life. She's almost everything right now. So uh, we'll keep Virat at nine and a half as well. Yeah, uh, nine nine and a half because that's how much he will allow you to know about himself. There's also a half percent that I'm sure like is reserved for his partner, uh, which is fair. So yeah, um, both the both the guys get nine and a half and ten on ten for my oh, wife. It's wonderful. Uh, that was good, Kael. Reminisce with Ash segment was really nice. Yeah. So we'll dive into the next segment, which is the Gentleman's League question brought to you by Peter England. Uh, so, Kale, there's been a lot of noise around spirit of cricket and what is the gentlemanly behaviour in the game and pretty much the history of the game says it's a gentleman's game. But T20 has come, it's become very competitive. 
So I thought I'll put you on the line and say, ask you a question on who do you think are the gentleman cricketer going around, cricketers going around the world right now? Do you have, who comes to your mind first up? Or maybe somebody who you've seen, if you can name a few and why? Um, first person that comes to my mind is obviously MS Dhoni. Um, Kane Williamson is right up there. Um, who else? I think in, in, in many ways they're very different, but um, Rohit and Virat will, will, will be there. I think everybody else, it's hard to say who's not a gentleman, I think. Um, no, but when you, when you say that, it sticks to your head. Like if you asked me, the first person I would say is, you know, a Sachin Tendulkar or a Rahul Dravid or somebody like that. And something would stick, right? In your, in your vision, okay, this is why I like this guy. This yeah. is why I think yeah. He's, yeah. he's like ideal. When you say gentleman, you, you're talking about an ideal character. And why would you think MS and Kane Williamson are pretty similar? Um, that's that's what I like in in people or like someone who's who's very composed, doesn't show too much emotion on a on a cricket field. I think um, that's that's my take on on how or that's that's my that's what I like. To see in a so you like somebody very calm and composed, very calm right? and composed, knows what has to be done, um, you know, doesn't get really phased by by victory or loss, so is just you know just enjoying um, playing the sport that they love, and you know the, that I think really like gets me like that. That's my that's what I look or that's what I would compare. And that's the first thing that comes in my mind when you say a gentleman of the game. Yeah. Any particular episodes that you remember of them that uh, really st 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 still stays with you? Um, no, I don't think it, one episode can create that kind of uh, a thing for for me at least. I mean, it's just overall, like um, over the years, how they've been, and that that really shows or speaks about who they are truly as as a person it cannot be a put on if it's done for so no, but many you would years. have you would have watched mahi boy on tv yeah. and that's when you would have made your first impression yeah. and then you would have gone on to see and you played the 2019 world cup with him yeah. so on and so forth did did your opinion about him on screen and in live differ at all or was it the same it became a lot more when you when i got to know him a lot more as in it got better yeah it got better or like you you the respect for him or or the appreciation and how much I admire him became a lot more once, you know, um, I started to get a little bit of who he is outside of the field. And same with Kane, I, I played with Kane in, uh, in Sunrisers. Um, I remember when I was in Sunrisers, I wasn't getting a lot of uh, games there and um, Tom Moody was the coach that time and he pulled me up at breakfast one day and said, uh, why are you wasting your time being here? He's like, oh, what do you mean coach? Like, you're, you know, you're not giving me any games, I'm not getting to play any matches. Um, what do you want me to do? He's like, I mean, you know, you have someone like Kane Williamson, who's one of the best players in, in world cricket right now, who's sitting with you on the bench and you're not making use of his experience and his knowledge about the game. Just sit with him and like, pick his brain over the next six, seven weeks that you have and, and you know, learn from him because, you know, you're, I feel like your game is very similar to Kane and he's also found a way to do really well in white ball cricket and, you know, he came up as, as a good red ball cricketer. So why don't you speak to him and not waste your time? So, you know, that's where, you know, I, I spoke a lot to Kane through that second season at SRH and that, you know, I got to know him. As a, as a person as well. So, some experiences or some conversations like that, that that really stuck with me and just overall seeing them over the years after you get to know them as a uh, as a person as well, that really uh, stands out for me. Barring the nationality and personalities be because of the nationalities, I also pretty much agree with you that MS and Kane are pretty similar yeah. in terms of what they do. Uh, anyway, I think that's a very short segment. The next segment is DRS with Ash, which is doing the rounds now. Okay. And DRS with Ash is brought to you by Probo. I'm going to put you on the spot, KL. I've got some really quick fire questions, rapid fire questions. Wow. But before that, I'll give you an opportunity to, you know, sort of review some of your own decisions in life. Right. 
if I had to give you the option of assessing, not 16, I can't give you 16 because you started in 2012, till today, if I gave you the opportunity to travel on a time machine and review one decision and correct it all over again, what would that be? Um, in terms of cricket? Anything, could be anything. Could be a decision you made, could be a shot you played, could be anything. I mean, I mean, the first thing that comes to my mind is is the the finals in Ahmedabad right now in against Australia 2023. Um, yeah, if I could, you know, I'm, I would just stuck in that moment of you know whether I take down Mitchell Stark or you know it was reversing and it, he was bowling from a di difficult angle for me to attack him. Um, you know, uh, so I was just stuck in between whether to attack or just play him and then take a chance on the other side. And in that confusion, you know, I you know, ended up nicking the ball and getting out at a at a crucial time. I mean, I felt like if I had continued that innings and gone on to play the rest of the 12 overs or whatever was left, uh, we could have probably gotten at least 30, 40 runs more and, and we could have probably had a World Cup in 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 our hands but yeah that's that's something that i'll regret it's not meant to be yeah. okay that's an interesting one so you would go back to that situation and want to play it all over again yeah perfect uh now i've got some questions uh for you from the ipl okay um it's quite an easy one to start off with how much did you go for in the 2018 auctions when kings punjab kings bought you do you know the exact amount or you need some options how much did I go for? Yeah. No, that's an easy one. I'm just yeah. warming you up. 11 crores. 11 crores. Bang on. I didn't give you options for that. Okay. In the same 2018 auctions, one other player went for 11 crores. Can you guess who and which team? Jaydev Unatkat and uh, Manish Pandey. Okay. I'll, I'll give you options so that you bang it on. You yeah, SRH it Manish went to and uh, Jaydev went to Rajasthan Royals. Perfect. Manish Pandey to SRH is the right answer. Question 3. Who is the most Expensive wicketkeeper batsman bought in an IPL auctions history. Mm. Options or you want to take it down? Like you've been taking it down. Nicholas Puran. By oh my Elish. god. Yeah. Amazing man. Yeah. Do you know the price? 16. We, we got him. So I no, but were you on the call when you got... No, we were playing the game, remember? We were in Bangladesh. We were playing that test match, second test, test match. match. That's yes. when the auction was happening. Correct, but how do you remember the price? Like, what do you do during the auction? Are you in touch with the owner? No, we're not when you're playing the game, but previously... But otherwise? Yeah, and after the days, after the end of days, you see the phone and you know uh, how much they've gone for. It's a damn good memory for someone who's told me, I know I don't watch this, I don't follow it. You've got to... No, I, I never said I don't watch cricket or don't follow it. I mean, I, I watch every game that that comes on, like, I'll watch every YouTube highlights of, of every game. So, you just don't talk yeah. about it? I mean... You're not like a cricket badger, you're a cricket yeah. watcher. Yeah, I'm a watcher, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And like like an auction dynamics at LSG, who are you in call with if, you are, if you're free? Yeah, I'm on the call with the whole whole team. Yeah. And like, has there, has there been a case where you said, oh, this player won this player and the bid is gone by? Has that happened ever? Um, let me think. Um, no, not so. No, not really. I mean, yep. we wanted uh, wanted Puran. We Although, wanted. I mean, we wanted Puran. We got him. I mean, no. I mean, I can't even call it a miss because we wanted someone at at like let's say ten, and they ended up going for uh, much of more. Money. Yeah. So then there, there's then no, that's not a miss. Yeah, that's it's not a mismatch in the budget that you've got. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. Question number four. You've got three on three. Which player has represented the most number of IPL teams? You're, you're not you're not going to say this without options, right? Are you going to take a shot? Even if you get if you're going to go for it, you take it. Take a shot. I'll give, Uthapa, I think. No, I'll give you options, but A. Dinesh Karthik, B. Yuvraj Singh, C. Tisara Pereira, D. Aaron Finch. Aaron Finch. Yes, it is Aaron Finch. Yeah. But that's not a bad one, Robin Uthapa. But I don't. Where did he no. go? He went to RR. Not so, many, not so many, not so many. Not so many. Yeah, yeah. In fact, Dinesh should have been a decent guess. Correct, correct. I'm, I'm right. I miss Dinesh. Yeah. Uh, Aaron Finch, precisely nine teams. Nine teams, yeah. Okay. And question number five, who was the most expensive Indian player in the 2021 IPL auction? 2021. I've got choices. Okay. I'll take the choices. You're not one of those school quizzers who went and, you know, did this bone vita quizzes and all that, right? No, no. 
you're not even looking for options. You're straight away thinking for I'm answers. I'm thinking, but when the option comes, okay. I'll, I'll know. Option A, Ravi Bishnoi. Option B, Deepak Huda. Option C, Krishna Pa Gautam. Option D, Krunal Pandya. K Gautam. <laughs> K Gautam. Price? Nine, nine crores. Or I'll give that to you. 9.25 crores by CSK. Yeah, yeah, CSK. Wow, that's amazing, Kale. It's, it's been... Yeah. Not bad, huh? Not bad. You got Surprise five out five, right? Yeah. Yeah, you did. I, I always used to think like everybody inside the Indian team dressing room used to name me like even now uh, Jaddu says you are crick, uh, you're not uh, does not crick info does ash info yeah that, they I make mean, fun I mean, of me but i mean yeah. just because you don't say it it doesn't i mean no competition with you but you're far ahead we are all like you play a different like no, uh, different I, planet we play a different like league i didn't know some of these answers myself rubbish seriously I will like know. after the questions were made i thought about it and then i thought okay maybe you don't know the prizes but if i ask you what nicholas puran like what's his highest score or what's his average or something, you will you no, Actually not. I'm not very good at averages in strike yeah. rates. I don't believe in that. Yeah. Like you said, it's more about the personality and what they can do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but on a really great note, it was a wonderful chat. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, so thank you so much for being on uh, this show. Thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Kuti Stories with Ash Vati by Peter England. Uh, but I've got something to hand over to you before we... Yeah. So yeah, this is a little something from Peter England, a gift hamper, KL. Thank you so thank much you. for doing thank this. Thank you, Ash. Thank you for having me.